The worst sidekick in games for me um, recently was playing a Plague Tale Innocence um, and playing as Amicia and then having her little brother Hugo tag along who is just Ooh, ooh, Hugo doesn't mean it. He doesn't mean it. He's a nice little boy. He's like a five-year-old boy with magic rat powers or something. Um, and he, he, he's, he just he just wants his mom. He just wants his family. He just wants everything to be nice. But he's got this illness that keeps him locked away. He doesn't know his sister Amicia until um, the Inquisition come, raid his castle, lovely French castle home, and um, him and his sister have to go on the run, presuming that their parents are both dead. So Amicia's on the run with her brother, who she's trying to basically teach the way of of life at the moment, which is in horrible, plague-ridden, disease-ridden towns um, that are all trying to fight to survive. So it's a horrible, dark, gothic horror game um, with a five-year-old boy in the midst of it and Magic Rat Boy. He's got Magic Rat Boy powers. Magic Rat Boy, as uh, Benroy calls him. It's just, he's just, oh my God, he's a five-year-old kid in a horror game. He's not going to do well, is he? He's not, he's not fun to look after. He's not cute. He's got this, he puts on this voice the whole way through Oh, Amicia, I'm just a little boy. And I just I, I don't care for it. I don't like it. I do not like Hugo. All you ever hear is him screeching. You've wandered too far away from him. He starts screaming like a little bitch because he needs Amicia to be around in, or in sight at all times because he can't cope to be on his own, which is not so good. Not so good when you're trying to hide from guards in a stealth game, a screaming little boy. The, the most relief I've ever felt in a game is when you do the Amicia levels on your own without Hugo and you just get rid of him for a bit because I was like, oh my god, I can live. I can live. Amicia can see what's going on in this world without having to drag Hugo along literally by the hand, connected in this weird two-person conglomerate that hobbles through all the levels. It's just... He's well-intentioned. He's well-intentioned and well-executed as a five-year-old boy, but he is, at the end of the day, a five-year-old boy. Good powers, though. Good powers that he doesn't get until like the last chapter. When and even then, even then, that last battle with all the rats, we have to base off a load of black rats against a big load of white rats, was a really bad final battle that was so shoehorned into a game that didn't fit, and it was because they needed to have Hugo as an apex point for it. Hugo, let's <laughs> <laughs> be having you. I hate Hugo, man. When it comes to other characters in games, there are a multitude of annoying little fuckos who get on my tits. One of them, uh, the OG, you might say, is uh, Tails Miles Prower, Miles Tails Prower, crap, uh, in Sonic 2, who, he, he's all right when you're doing your platforming, he's fine, he, he just lags a bit behind and dies because he's an idiot. But the, the thing that he's the most annoying in is when you are trying to do the special stages and get the, and get the uh, Chaos Emeralds, and you've got to avoid those black testicle bomb things, and he just keeps happily running into them, and obviously his ring total adds to yours, and as much as he doesn't lose rings for you, if you are just over the amount you need because of Tails' 12 rings, you've then lost them all because he's run into something because he's an idiot. Um, but the main one that I'm actually going to say is not a character that I personally find annoying. I, in fact, I love this character. I adore her. She is my waifu in the game she's from. But to everyone else, she's annoying as heck. And that's Carillion from uh, Warhammer Vermintide 2, which is a Left 4 Dead 2 clone kind of thing in the Warhammer universe. It's amazing. Go watch Jules' review, it's great. But uh, in this game, she is just basically, she's just a bitch to everyone. Great. Because your characters, your four playable characters uh, that you, you will play as, uh, they, all just, they all talk to each other while you're in the game. And genuinely, Carillion's just there most of the time saying, ha ha ha, you're really shit, aren't you? Come on, come on, kids, we're going this way. Or, what's that, you hit a headshot? I did that when I was knee high, because I'm really good and I'm an elf, therefore I can shoot well. She's genuinely just the most abrasive bitch on the planet. And the rest of everyone get on relatively okay, their characters, but Carillion is just constantly an arsehole to everyone. And if you're playing Vermintide with me, you're gonna get a mouthful from Carillion because she's my waifu. This is easy because I was actually having a lot of difficulty with this until the it popped into my brain that it's EE from Metal Gear Solid 2. Like that game is, is one of my favorite Metal Gear Solid games. In fact, it's my favorite Metal Gear Solid game. You've got that on record now. But there's one section where Raiden has to escort Otacon's sister, who he hasn't seen in a long time, um, away from danger. But the problem is she's got this illness that means like she's very fragile and she can't walk fast. So you've got to literally hold her hand from one place to the next. And that's bad enough. But then you have some of the worst underwater sections in gaming history where you don't know where you're going and she has a smaller breath 
health life bar thing than you do. So it's already annoying when you're just riding trying to get through, and it's even worse when you've got this poorly lady on your back. And the game really tries to make you care for her, like over and over again. She's only in a small section, but it absolutely hammers home how much you should be emotionally invested in EE. And sadly, I just, I just never was, because she's only there, spoilers for this decades old game, to die. She's there to die and make you feel a bit sad. And it's so transparent and you have to care for her so much that it's it, it ain't it. Like, I, I, it, it hurts me to go back and play through Metal Gear Solid 2 for this section because it's so slow and slow tedious and you can just see what the developers are doing every step of the way. And there's just better ways to do that. Make it like The Last of Us or something. Make it more interesting. So, side characters, we've got a few annoying ones over the years, and I think we've done 40,000 lists. Now, like, you'd expect me to go for the, the obvious one, Resident Evil 4, Ashley. Leon! Leon! And she's getting carried away by demon monks. But no, I mean, like, it's been done to death, isn't it? But then again, I'm going to do one that's already been done to death. And this isn't because of the character themselves, but I think it's just the stupid, dumb AI. And it is. Natalia from N64's classic Goldeneye. And why? Because she just walks in front of the enemy as you're trying to decode part of the base so you can move on. She's walking around, oh, I'm going to do this, especially on big head mode. It is impossible to play this game on big head mode when you've got Natalia because she just absorbs the bullets. There is like one or two times that she'll help you in like a combat situation. Apart from that, goes to the computer have to wait for the game to realize that the the bot is there and then few few bullets runs away like that and you've got to kill everyone and start again if she doesn't already get shot so that's my pick natalia because natalia the ai in that game back in then when it was so finicky and fiddly like all these things on top just fucking awful great game though I think that the most annoying side f is the one that makes the most annoying noise. So I'm going to go with uh, Baby Mario from Yoshi's Island? Island. Story? Island. Nightmare, in my case. Uh, yeah, every time you drop him, every time you get a hit, like the whole game it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's aged so well. It's on the uh, SNES Mini. It's on the um, Nintendo Switch little mini SNES collection thing that you can get. It's still totally worth going back to now. It's got this lush, like, pastel kind of pastoral aesthetic, and it just looks awesome. And you play as Yoshi, and you're supposed to, between all the different Yoshis, you're supposed to ferry baby Mario from, you know, one beginning of the level to the end. You pass him on to the next Yoshi, and you keep going. But if you get touched by anything at any point he'll fly off the back of you and just go Aah! over and over again and it's the most infuriating thing Ash just popped herself <laughs> and it's not a nice time and it's just you have to jump after him even though you're being beset by a whole bunch of enemies and environmental hazards and everything else just so you can jump into midair to try and get him to calm him down to move forward again only to be hit and Aah! to happen again and it just goes on and on and on and on and he never contributes anything everybody hates baby Mario he's one of the worst characters in Mario Kart anyway and <gasps> I regret picking him up just because he's got good acceleration, mate. Doesn't mean that he's worthwhile. Dry Bowser, all right? Going forward, Shy do that. Guy. Shy guy. Anybody other than baby pissing Mario. I'd rather just let him fly through the air and die against a rock than spend the time <laughs> catching him next time. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the marvel that I have created. Uh, comics. They called me a fool for trying to put a dead meme onto a t-shirt. A damn bold fool. A damn bold fool with an ass that won't quit. It got quite personal towards the, the end there. But look who's laughing now. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Quiet, my son, my ugly son. For my other creation rises. Look at the quality fabric, hand-stitched by blind orphans. The perfect letter spacing calculated so meticulously that Rich Hudson had an erection for months about it. And a colouring so deep that I had to buy the dye off the dark web. Oh, for God's sake, Josh! Sorry, 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 sorry. <sighs> <laughs> oh, Marvel. Oh no, the beast has grown angry. Angered by our drab fashion choices, I am such a fool to think that it wouldn't try to infect us with its perfect, perfect design. Quick, we must do something to appease the beast. 
Why don't we buy one from shop.worldculture.com? Oh. Look, it's already got Scott Nash! Oh, oh. Ah. oh no! Ah. 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 <laughs> but where can I buy one? Are you kidding me? This is why I don't give you any extra lines. But also, at shop.whatculture.com! Quick, let's go and buy one right now! Let's go buy one right now! Right now? Oh, don't you try hard now! You've already lost your bit! Oscar's in the f***ing bin! Ah, there we go! Doesn't that look better? It feels so virile and alive! And it's also fixed your hump. That's actually pretty good. Now, do yourself a favour and act like your mum and spread the love, aka her legs, and buy yourself one of these glorious dead memes on a t-shirt, courtesy of this handsome chap right here. You're very, very welcome. Cut! Jesus Christ, mine is oh, so it's itchy. What? What? Uh, it stinks. I pissed on yours. The worst font ever! I want to die. <laughs>